The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, Realist Puppet in the game. Today, I'm bringing you five essential tips for clean, professional vocal production before your recordings even hit the plugins. That means we're covering everything that takes place between the recording and the editing process that makes your mixing phase even easier. The very first thing that I did recording this vocal to help the entire thing just sit better in the mix was only record the lead vocal close to the mic. It's a singer's natural tendency to just stay close to the mic for the entire recording session, but really you only want that lead vocal to have that full close mic sound that gives it its shine. The rest of the vocals can practically mix themselves just by backing off the mic in accordance to how much of a background you want this vocal to be. For example, my doubles, I would stand maybe just a foot away, and then for my shouty vocals, I would go all the way across the room and shout into the mic and turn the gain up a little bit. But just the difference in tone you get from changing the singer's proximity to the mic practically mixes your vocal recordings themselves. So which is why it's my number one trick for clean acapellas before your vocals even hit the plugins. For number two, there's obviously a lot of space that doesn't need to be in here. When we solo our vocal, Young puppet on the way up. You hear some headphone bleed, some breathing, all kinds of stuff that doesn't need to be in there. So every single vocal, I go in and do some cutting and fading. And that means that I isolate just what I want to hear and make sure that there's a little bit of a fade. It can be a little bit tedious, but boy, are the results worth it. And you don't have to go so deep where, you know, in between these short words, you even cut it, but you're just generally looking to get rid of the headphone bleed and do a smooth fade. Also, this fade can be used to kind of tame the attack of a word. Condenser microphones can exaggerate the consonants of the beginning of a word a little bit, and you can use a fade to really smooth them out and not have it jump out so harsh at you. And likewise, at the end of the word, you tend to get an exhale. And you can also use your fade, cut it a little bit closer than you'd think. In the game. Yeah. In the game. Keep it nice and tight. Because this is a background vocal, and we don't really need any of the junk after the word. Now you may be thinking, Reed, isn't that what a gate plugin is for? Yes, but I find the finished product to be so much cleaner and more professional sounding than just throwing a gate on here and letting it guess. I find gates leave you with some chopped off breaths and some slightly inconsistent results, especially if you've got some background noise in your recordings, like headphone bleed. So for professional results, I say cut and fades all the way. Or sometimes it's easier to just hit Command E and just slice and delete. Really depends on the shape of what you're cutting around and a really awesome shortcut Ableton just added as a new feature in 10. You can go boom, add fades to these, boom, add fades to these. Save you a little time doing multiple clips at the same time. Now we've got a noise and headphone bleed free acapella. Let's take a listen now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Young puppet on the way up, on the way up. Name, no thing, I might just run for mayor. Sample packs for the haters, but if you still acting salty, you should keep yourself hydrated. Splash, splash, stacking 100 chaos. Does your master chain sound a little weak sauce? Do your tracks lack organic flavor and quality? Maybe you're just missing the sauce. Introducing Master Sauce, our organic blend of Ableton effects that'll get your master so crispy you might never use another plug-in chain again. Master Sauce is available now only at wholeloops.com. My next tip involves some more cutting and fading, but instead of removing it, we're just gonna be reducing the volume of any syllables that seem too loud. And it's usually gonna be the S's or anything that kind of sticks out as not sounding right. So we're gonna take a listen and kind of just stop 
and use the clip gain to pull down the volume of whatever piece kind of sticks out. Sample packs for the haters, but if you still acting salty, you should keep yourself hydrated. Splash. Splash. Maybe the word packs on all these are a little loud, so you just highlight them all, pull the clip gain down minus two or so on these. Sample packs for the haters, but if you still acting salty, you should keep yourself hydrated. Splash. Splash. Stacking 100 chaos. Stop. Stop. Make it look just like a layup, like a layup. Wow. Open my refrigerator and I got nothing but sauce, so I'm saucing all my haters. All right, so there's a lot of S's right there. So this is where we can go in and do some manual DSing. You'll see the high frequency stuff is the th kind of thicker waveforms and the low frequency stuff is the more spiky ones. So you know your S's are going to be these thick ones right here. Sauce. And we'll grab this one too. They don't start at exactly the same time, so we're gonna do these separately. And I'm gonna pull the volumes of these S's down like minus 10. And this is all a de-esser is doing. And since Ableton doesn't come with the de-esser, you're gonna probably, you're gonna be needing this for sure. So I didn't do this to every S, I'm just doing it to the ones that stick out and sound bad. Got nothing but sauce. Might have been a little bit too much. Let's try minus five instead of minus ten. We're just trying to have them kind of surprise you. Like that. Sauce, sauce. Boom. As you can see, the first S in sauce, much softer and easier to listen to than the second one. So I'm going to go through and just fix up the second one here. As long as you don't have any of the loud S in there and you kind of do the fade before or after the S, you're going to have a clean, unnoticed transition. Sauce, 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 and I'm a hater. Sauce, sauce, yeah. Young puppet on the way up. Young puppet, name, no thing I'm much. And since the second half of the hook is just the first half of the hook with some different ad libs, we don't have to do our work all over again and we can just fly it over. Tip number four for professional vocals before they hit the plugins, you're going to want to zoom in and make sure things that are stacked up are aligned well. Even singers with good timing can have a little bit of variation in their performance. And Ableton has an amazing little shortcut where you just hold command and nudge things around. So I'm just highlighting, using command for smooth highlighting instead of grid highlighting, and then using command E to make it its own piece and just nudging it around. And Ableton does perfectly good crossfades, so you're not gonna have to do too much extra fading for this unless you do some drastic changes. And this one's came in early. Acting salty, you should keep yourself hydrated. Splash, splash, stacking 100 chaos. Stop, 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 stop. Make it look just like a layup, like a layup. Wow. Open my refrigerator, and I got nothing but sauce, so I'm saucing all my haters. And this whole bottom take can probably use a little bit of a nudge to the right. In Pro Tools, you use the plus and minus keys on your number pad. But here in Ableton, we're doing command left and command right. And this command left and right trick also works for nudging MIDI clips too. Like if you wanted this uh, little chant thing to be a little bit later, boom, command left and command right. My fifth and final tip is something that adjusts the overall swag of the acapella. You may find that your vocal is a little bit early or a little bit late, so I always like to kind of just explore a little bit and see if you can make it sound cooler by sliding the whole thing a little bit earlier or a little bit later. You can actually really change the style and energy of the performing with this slight timing adjustment. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go yeah. early. It's the realest in the game. Yeah. Young puppet on the way up, on the way up. Name, no thing, I might just run for mayor. Especially for trap vocals, being slightly ahead of the beat will help your lyrics not get eaten by the 808 because the word starts before the kick and 808 hit. So now that you've got your vocal recorded correctly, cut and faded, de-essed, aligned, 
and nudged to fit the swing of the beat, it's finally time to add your plugins. And if you do a good job with these first five steps, when you go to add your plugins, it should be a breeze. So for example, I've got lead vocal sauce down here on this channel. And now we can really go crazy with the compression and not have to worry about that headphone bleed. Young puppet on the way up, on the way up. Nay, no think I might just run for mayor. I'm for mayor. Sample packs for the haters, but if you still acting salty, you should keep yourself hydrated. Splash, splash. Stacking 100k up. Stop, 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 stop. Make it look just like a layup, like a layup. Wow. Open my refrigerator, and I got nothing but sauce. So I'm saucing all my haters. Stop, stop, stop. Young puppet on the way up. Young puppet. Well, there you have it. Those are my five tips for clean professional vocal production before your recordings even hit the plugins. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found the tips and tricks in this tutorial useful, and I'll catch you next time with another tutorial. Peace out.